Neville tells the story of a young engineer who'd never earned over $10,000 a year and how he occupied a state and doubled the income within two weeks. And this is how he went to occupy the state. Neville asked him, Where would you work if you made your 20000 He said, I've picked out the job. They don't know it, but the building is on Madison Avenue. I know exactly the floor. I've ridden up in the elevator. I've gotten off at the floor and walked into the office. I know where I would sit were it true that I would work there, where I will hang my hat, and where I take off my coat where I will put it. I know exactly what I will do. I said, all right, now stand in the elevator and go up. See it, stop at the floor and get off. Walk right into the place, take off your hat and jacket, and just simply be natural in the job. Within two weeks, he was on that job at 20000 a year. So is there somewhere you'd like to be that you're not right now, a position that you'd like to occupy that you don't have right now? And you can ask yourself the same question to help you occupy that state. Where would you be if your wish was fulfilled? What would you experience? And then go in your imagination and bring it alive. Experience it as natural as you can. And Neville talks about our own inner monsters that get reflected in our outer world. The problems we have with other people and things, the horrors we see in the world. But Neville realized the connection. That every time he exercises his imagination unlovingly on behalf of another, it energizes this unlovely creature. Every time he acted or reacted violently, he fed and energized it. He calls it symbolically Esau from the Bible. Neville pledged to redeem this monster no matter how long it took even eternity. Neville says, Such a creature should not live in this world, and I, in my ignorance, gave him birth. This monstrous thing that fed and lived on violence. In my blindness, he would whisper in my ear throughout the twenty-four hour day, yes, even in my dreams, and urge me to violence, and urge me to react in the unlovely way. Neville goes on to say, he discovered it was simply his misused, misspent energy throughout eternity. Before his inner eye, The monstrous thing melted and left no trace of ever having been present. But as it melted, all the energy that it embodied came to me. It returned to me who gave it. And Neville felt such a power in his life. Everything came back to Neville, and then the glorious creature that represented the personification of all his noble acts, his lovely acts, his ever-loving thought, every state, it glowed as the other one completely melted before his inner eyes. So every time you practice your imagination lovingly, you are feeding the glorious monster, you are exercising Jacob. So you see, even Neville had his own demons to deal with. But he understood the symbolism. But with understanding, he learned how to conquer it, and to transform it to free the energy, and to feed all that is noble, lovely, and good. So Neville says, these two beasts are in everyone, but which one are you feeding? Often we're feeding between the both of them, And that's why we have mixed results and delays, or sometimes don't get the things we want. Yes, please.
It's around $11. And finally, Neville speaks of his I Remember technique, another way to bring your vision alive. He would look at what is and talk about it as though it was. He had a vision on Fifth Avenue where there was an empty lot, and he would say, I remember when it was an empty lot. It still is an empty lot, and it was still an empty lot to his outer senses, but he's not interested in his outer senses. Neville would build a word picture as he desired it to be, he would simply say, I remember, when it was an empty lot. And then he would paint a picture with his words, what he would like to see instead as though it already was. In a way, it's kind of like scripting, but it's more live, in the moment, speaking from your heart. Now let us go into the silence. Good.